come out to channel14.com's Bodega Nights where a bunch of friends find an excuse to hang out and record something. For the first time, if all works well, you'll see us on screen. Yay! Yay! Yes. Sorry, we're not as handsome as we sound. It doesn't matter, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> My name is AG. My name is Martin. Yeah, hey, I'm Norm. I'm John. Hello, I'm Sima. I'm Bo. And we're here. Doing My stuff. house. <laughs> At his house, where he had pizza... <laughs> played some video games, and tried to record the podcast because, again, an excuse to hang out. So, gents, how's life? <sighs> life. <laughs> Lifey. Life. Uh, well, uh, all right, let's go one by one. Bok, how's life? Happy third. <laughs> so what do, you, what, are you, what do you do now? I'm still the same. I'm still doing the same thing as before. Still teaching. Still with kids. Still with my kids. Came from a Halloween party for my kids a while ago. If you say my kids, it sounds like it's they're really your kids. <laughs> oh, come on. They're my kids. They're oh, students. Okay. Student, yeah. <laughs> All right. I thought you already had kids. It'd be like, huh, well, does your girlfriend know about that? <laughs> Do we know yeah. about that? That's the first no, time I've heard about it. Nah, don't worry. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Seems. How about you? Life is okay. Not doing much, unfortunately. But what I did was compiled some material for the podcast. So, <laughs> I did. let's get into it. What, it. Doesn't matter what our other lives are. <laughs> ah, we are list. Yeah. Unlistical. Uh, <laughs> oh, so our list. team was a regular Buzzfeed. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. We already talked about this, right? We well, probably didn't. But what? That yeah, we did uh, a while ago in our pre-show production meeting. <laughs> okay, so we also really? known as having pizza. <laughs> so we will be rehashing our green room discussion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, but that's what they actually do in Hollywood, right? They have a pre-production meeting and everything. Anyway. Oh my gosh, we really listened it down. <laughs> Yeah, what we were talking about a while ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why you gotta make lists, man. <laughs> He's so, organized. Well, yeah, we're organized. You're you're a teacher. You should know this. Yeah. Uh, okay. What? So. Right. Uh, th- this one was supposed to be done for another episode that we had, mm-hmm. but uh, I think what happened was our technical expertise was not up to par, and the <laughs> Even recording. <up> to now? <laughs> Yes, well, even up to now. But hopefully this one works. So there. Uh, yeah. So, what have we been doing lately? I guess uh, we've all been watching movies. We all love movies, <laughs> right? I hope so. Yeah. I hope we love movies. Or yes. else it'd be torture. <laughs> and what we most love are the bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> bad movies well you know good and bad can be subjective in terms of the quality of the movie so you you can I, I don't know how how would you guys uh, define a bad movie well a movie that's not good ish I would say um, great movies come and go but bad movies the really really bad ones are truly memorable they are etched in history Bad movies. But there yeah. are there are many components to a movie, and most movies usually get uh, at least some of them right. A bad movie gets most of it wrong. Yeah. A bad movie. There's depends. no bad movie if I paid for that shit. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about. Bob, you 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 uh, you uh, made a movie <laughs> review of uh, Bob. Oh gosh, Martina. it's dead now. But, yeah, he's but, also made a movie. Oh yeah, guys! Hey. We made the movie. Remember? Yeah, a long, long time ago. Anyways, <laughs> what's a bad movie? Thing? In this galaxy, not far away. <laughs> <laughs> well, a bad movie. We would say that two, there are two types. There's the bad movie where the people there's a sense of earnestness in it, the campy type, and there's the bad movie that's pretty much just people who really believe that they're making something good, but really do not have the technical expertise to do so. Yes. Or maybe those that probably are skillful directors would actually made a bad one because it just wasn't meant to be, I think. Yeah. And I guess in order to appreciate a good movie, you really have to, well, watch or have seen a lot of bad movies. <laughs> and so, that's why I compiled a list of the reasons. What a guy. <laughs> what a guy. Yes. The reasons why Bodega loves bad movies. <laughs> now... Some of the, uh, some of these things are related to a particular person. Some of them, I think, we can all relate to. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, I know. In no particular order. Number one. Oh, okay, so these reasons are in no particular order. Number one, AG, you should know about this. You invested money in that ba- bad moon- movie. That means you paid you paid money, real hard-earned money for the movie ticket or for a DVD or for a Blu-ray of that movie. And then you're thinking, yeah, might as well goddamn enjoy that thing. <laughs> yes. Why do you think I'm so happy with Divergent? <laughs> Just find a fucking good thing about that movie. I paid that from 3D. Wait, you, you, you saw it in 3D? You saw it in 3D? You saw it in 3D. I know. That's why I'm enjoying it to the last core. Even after you've seen it, you might as well maximize your... Might, you might as well maximize it movie viewing experience. At least in my And then look for things that I would like, even though it's so god awful. Yeah. It really needs to oh, experience the Especially that movie. She looks really cute. Exactly, I mean, that's why I find all the redeeming qualities you can squeeze out of it and then try to forget it, but you won't because you paid for it. <laughs> so I just want to live with that decision. Yeah, what was the last movie I saw? No, no, the last movie I saw wasn't bad, it was okay. The Martian? Oh, okay. Doesn't count, not today. Yes, not, today. not, not exactly, yeah. Not it, it got a lot of good reviews. That, that was a good movie. Yeah. No, I can't remember the, no, I can't remember the last bad movie I saw. I mean, the last, what? prior to The Martian, I saw a mediocre one. Terminator Genesis. Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> that one we can count as a bad movie. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Terminator I, I and Genesis. Genesis. No, I, Terminator, also known as How to Kill a Franchise. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I saw that in film. I, I, saw, I can't believe I saw it in the theater. In the cinema? In the cinema. Oh, okay. I saw it in the cinema. I can't believe it. I mean, because if so that's why live action, I mean, man, <laughs> what are you watching? So that so that means you might as well enjoy it because you paid money to watch it in the cinema. I tried to enjoy it. I just it couldn't. It sucks. Oh, okay. I, I didn't like it that much. I mean, and it was okay, but it was more like meh. Meh, oh, okay. It was meh. Actually, it, it wasn't truly horrible, you know? Uh, it wasn't. It, it, the structure was fine. Pacing was a bit off. And it did have the more appealing version of Emilia Clark in it. <laughs> so <laughs> But 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 Jay Courtney was in it. <laughs> Let's not forget that also he known came as from Franchise that? Killer. Who's Jay that? Courtney. No, seriously, who's that guy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was that guy. He was also that guy in He was also in Divergent. <laughs> he was in Divergent. He was oh, also in Spartacus, the first series, yes. uh, first season. Mm-hmm. He was also in He died um, there so in Die they... Hard again, a franchise that died. <laughs> he was also oh. in Jack Reacher. Oh, oh John the Tom Cruise uh, movie about without the, a sequel. Yeah, without a sequel. <laughs> again, a franchise that died. <laughs> it's a Tom Cruise movie without a sequel. How could that happen? And I'm sure he's gonna be in a lot of other movies so, in the future. So he's it's like the film version of Ted McGinley. He he kills is happy days. He's kind of like the anti uh, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Renner. <laughs> What's that word? Jeremy Renner extends the life of a franchise. Franch- <laughs> uh, so he extends the, the board legacy franchise. Jeremy Renner. Now they have, you know, the other guy coming back in. Matt Damon. Matt hey, Damon. Spending more money bringing him back. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in uh, Mission Impossible. To yeah. bring back the franchise. To, to bring back yeah. the franchise. Uh, after a long time, the Mission Impossible franchise was uh, dormant. Yeah. And then when they did the new movie, uh, was that Ghost Pro? Ghost Pro yes. Yeah, he was now there. Was, yeah, back to back. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in Once Upon a Time in China or something. <laughs> Is that how many movies has that got now? No, no, no. I'd be surprised <laughs> if he was in Rush Hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, maybe he was. Maybe he was like a stunt double for Jackie Chan. Heck, if John Cena was in that uh, WCW movie. He was in that WCW movie. Uh, <laughs> what? Ready to Rumble? Yes. What? Seriously? Yes. You couldn't see Redditors. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, John Cena's in that movie. Yeah, we as did a blondie who was carry out was it like 
doing weights at the oh. background. Oh wait. Okay. Okay. So he, he was still under like uh, the he was gym. still a young, still a uh, yeah, yeah. young uh, wrestler slash actor. He was still there. training during those times. Oh okay. But it was still John Cena. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, and, that, and that kind of brings up the next point: why we why we like watching bad movies. You want to watch, or, or you like young Hollywood's next crop of B actors? Because <laughs> you want to see the actors that are not kind of A list, not, not quite at the level of Tom Hanks or uh, Sandra Bullock or George Clooney. Those guys that you know that will be invited at the Oscars and they're gonna win everything. They're they're kind of the, the next tier. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. want you want the actors, to, the actors that. Whose names, when you use, make you sound really smart to film people. Yeah. So uh, uh, I can use John Cena to be smart to film people. <laughs> Maybe, perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe in the few, uh, as John Cena, as uh, discussion discussion father, in the future for bad movies. <laughs> Yeah, like like they, earlier in his they, seminal performance in the Marine. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, no, it's like with Jay Courtney. <laughs> yes, yes, just like uh, Jay 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 Courtney. Hey, He's he, like the franchise killer. Hey, he, the franchise. He's a franchise boarder. <laughs> oh. There's a Marine two and a Marine three. <laughs> John Marine two was Ted DiBiase. Yeah, yeah. Ted DiBiase, and then the Miz. But <laughs> <laughs> but so notice, <laughs> it was not John Cena. Yeah. Who continued that uh, franchise? <laughs> they had to put in somebody new. It was almost like the Marine One, Two, uh, two Three, uh, the Marine series. Uh, it's like the Two and Three are just like reboots of a reboot. It just didn't. <laughs> or like uh, for the Rundown Part Two, instead of The Rock, it's now Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> or Delta Force when Chuck Norris left. Yeah. <laughs> and then it became Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> So yeah, it's like, no, uh, it's, uh, oh, it's um, behind enemy lines. Behind enemy lines. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, just yeah. Columbia behind enemy lines. Yeah. Columbia and then Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, yeah I just learned something uh, after the original movie with uh, Owen Wilson. Yeah, I think yeah. WWE e films took over the behind enemy lines franchise, and that's yeah. why uh, <laughs> it yeah. starred their uh, their wrestlers. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Kennedy. I, have, I think I for the third for the third one. I haven't seen the Mr. Kennedy movie. But it's gotta be more entertaining than Owen Wilson. <laughs> oh really? You, you didn't like uh, the first Behind Enemy Lines movie? The first one was kind of okay. No, you're, no, not, no, you're no. not an Owen Wilson fan. I, I don't know. I expected comedy out of Owen Wilson <laughs> and Behind Enemy Lines. I was pretty disappointed uh, for fair. that movie. Uh, to be fair, yeah, he was miscast in that film. Okay, but okay. it's not a bad film. It's just mediocre. I think. It's not what he called a bad film. Well, okay. Uh, it, it was nice that we talked about WWE films and actors uh, <laughs> being in bad movies. Because another reason why we love, that Bodega loves bad movies is <laughs> because we just want to chant along to something. <laughs> or to <laughs> quote something from a bad movie. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, Mar- Marvin, um, Marvin, Mar- rather Martin was... <laughs> I was thinking of Martin uh, when uh, when I wrote this. <laughs> I know that uh, he likes uh, wrestling and he likes to chant along to something. And uh, I was thinking of a particular movie. Street Fighter? No. But that's a brilliant movie. <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> it was a bad movie. It was a movie that was really bad. It became good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, was so so we have the room. Yeah, it was Don't very forget. quotable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes... <laughs> The really bad movies because of it's so <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah, the script writing is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the day M. Bison rolled into your village <laughs> was the day I changed your life. <laughs> the most momentous the most, day the of your life. The most important day of your life. <laughs> but to for me, me, it was, was Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Interesting note. It didn't sound as dramatic as you would see it on YouTube. Yeah. We're talking about this it was, it's it's actually, well, to be fair, I didn't understand what that meant at yeah. the time. Or Van Damme speech. Oh, yeah. That Van, yeah, that Van Damme inspirational speech. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Especially the end part. Oh, <laughs> where you have Bison wannabe, <laughs> will feel it. <laughs> no, no, not that part. The part where you go, ah, afterwards. Who's gonna grab home? No, who's gonna go home? Who's gonna go no. with me? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the cheese has a bit uh, The but thing is, I mean, Guile is supposed to be played by an American. 
With the, not with the, you have the muscles from Brussels, though. Muscles. Remember, that's what he was called. Muscles from Brussels. Muscles from Brussels. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <from Brussels. laughs> but that, but that's yeah. okay because Americans have been portraying people of other nationalities in other movies for so long. Fair that's game. Fair a game. little role reversal. <laughs> <laughs> the muscles from Brussels. Hey, yeah, that's what they stole. I mean, they have the muscles from Brussels fighting the Italian stallion in Expendables. So, no, speaking of that, wait, 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 wait. Because you see, Street Fighter, you have a Belgian playing an American. That's just like karmic reversal for when you had an American playing a Mongol in the Genghis Khan movie. John Wayne is Genghis Khan. That's no. It's just about as absurd as uh, John Claude Van Damme as Guile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <clears throat> next okay. on the list. Yeah, next on the list is that we're looking for the next that guy, that guy <laughs> actor. That guy. Before no, uh, Jay Courtney. <laughs> Jay Jay that Courtney. guy. <laughs> no, Jay Courtney. No, yeah. no, we're gonna talk about that guy. It's James Cromwell. <laughs> James <laughs> Cromwell. <laughs> and daddy of all those. That. Guys. And who's the every general ever in uh, uh, The Rock? Uh, oh, that guy. Oh, that <laughs> guy. And Harris? No, 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 and, and, Harris, and Harris is not a that guy. And Harris, Harris is not a that guy. But in no, no, military no. movies, Glenn Moore Shower, <laughs> the actor. Oh, wait. No, that's all. Oh, oh, wait. No, no, he's a general in the night. Transformers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you've seen him in other movies, right? No, he was he, also in uh, Twenty Four, the TV series. No, I haven't seen 20, I haven't seen that part, but uh, I know Glenn Marshall only became the general after he appeared in you know, in in the first Transformers film, and it's been in every Michael Bay film since. Yeah, that's precisely. He's, <laughs> he's a that guy. guy. He's Wait, the, you, yeah, you see he's him on film. Yeah, yeah, but he's not a that guy as you guys would go for. Probably go for James. Say Trauma like David Wyndham. When he was narrating 300 <laughs> Notes of Aramir And then now you have to see him in like what, what are, I, There's, there's also about. another period Like one of those period movies he was in It was like yeah, Okay, somebody's getting typecast And then his voice was used for The Deadliest Warrior <laughs> In his 300 voice Oh, <laughs> right, that was uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who is Deadliest <laughs> The Deadliest Warrior <laughs> The Brutality of the Zulu <laughs> Versus <laughs> His voice has become a that guy voice. He's that guy. He's the voice. <laughs> voice. I, didn't, I didn't realize it was him until now. <laughs> exactly. That is a that guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> to be a, a that guy. You never yeah. know. Eventually, a that guy uh, g- gains fame, notoriety. So you uh, eventually know who he is, like James Cromwell. But yeah, yeah, James Cromwell. Like David Wyndham. <laughs> Or the yeah, best version that of guy. that guy is Machete. Oh, yeah. Oh, Trejo. Oh, Trejo. 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 He's yeah, in a lot yeah, of movies. So you, you know his look. You know his, uh, he's the his, only... his gimmick, his act. He's that guy. He's he totally the same thing. Mexican. Yeah. Angry Mexican. <laughs> Angry Mexican. <laughs> or Latino, even. Uh, the, the, other, the other Mexican guy, too. Uh, Guzman. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that guy, that guy, the Luis guy. Guzman. Yeah, Luis Guzman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. There's funny another, guy. Th- there's another Mexican that guy also. Eh? Um, yeah. Tomas Rosales. I don't know if you guys know the guy. I don't Where did know. he appear? Okay. Um, that's how you identify him. If you guy. guys have seen Con Air, he's one of those Mexicans that. There were Nicholas. many Mexicans in Con Air. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, he was one of those. No, he wasn't Mexican. Oh, I'm sorry, that's racist. The guy was one of those Latinos. La, one of those Latinos with a with that with that. I don't know with that. Thank you. Cartel yeah. dude. Ah. The guy that plays the silence, the suppressor, the in the. In the, the guy with the soul. silencer. Uh, I, I I don't remember. No, but, but what else? We're gonna have to watch Con Air again. Yeah. A good reason uh, to watch Con Air. Oh, good have you guys always again. a good reason. <laughs> Have, if you guys have seen Jurassic Park The Lost World He's the guy that the T-Rex stepped on I get it The T-Rex stepped on a lot of people man yeah. <laughs> No there was that one particular There's only one particular part in The Lost World Oh wait World wait you're talking about The Lost World The Lost, the Lost World the, the, the second Lost movie World. The, the second, second Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park movie um, he was the guy. You know, he was the guy that when he woke up Started screaming that's why the Park <laughs> camp and, uh, Actually uh, the, the that That's guy. a that guy there the, that guy is usually a very good role ca- uh, role actor or a character actor, yeah. so uh, that's what makes him memorable. So it makes him that guys, and usually because they're so good, 
at that character they're acting, they get typecast. Typecast yeah. into a certain role. Yeah. yeah, like like the guy in The Rock earlier, the the lieutenant. He's always this <laughs> rough, silent soldier. Uh, uh, what was his name? Buck? The commander, the the team leader. Yeah, the, the second Michael in command Lee. to General Francis X. Hummel. Oh, uh, <laughs> David uh, Morse. Yes, David Morse. <laughs> David Morse. Yeah. Yeah, that's another that guy. And he's yeah. also the PI and anything the antagonist in House Season 2. Yeah. Yeah, he always plays this one character. He's always strong, silent, and will kick your face in. <laughs> so, uh, and even, even uh, Cromwell, he, he tends to a certain type of character. Usually silent, soft spoken, but full of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, Except uh, in that time when he was the general in the general's daughter. Yeah. But he was still full of wisdom. Oh yeah. He was, <laughs> no, the guy was. He was a eraser. fatherly figure. Yes. The guy. the guy was an eraser though. He was the one that shot himself in the head because he was the one making the EM guns. Mm. Oh. He was an eraser. But also. he was still a very, very kindly, wise old man who shot himself in the head. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> oh, he was in the head. <laughs> okay. So another reason why we like uh, watching bad movies is, and I, uh, I was thinking about John when. Uh, when I wrote this down was you're looking for something to rant about when it comes to storytelling <laughs> and I guess it, it's a natural outgrowth because it's a bad movie there's something <coughs> off and sometimes it's a, a, a problem in casting but uh, I guess a lot of the times yeah I guess a lot of times it's storytelling or when something you're talking is about somebody who just doesn't know how to make a film oh hi yeah. Mark <laughs> we're gonna talk about The Room Oh. oh, Martin, we're going to talk about the room. There it is. <laughs> Please, Martin, enlighten us. Wait, have you seen the room? Though? Seen it? Jesus no, I haven't. But I, 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 <laughs> it's okay. the room. Man, it's it's the room. I, I, I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. I, I have that visual thought. masterpiece. Everybody has seen it. I yeah. tried to watch it. I couldn't get past the Dude, It's minutes. like the most awesome. Wait, what item number is this again? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. Sure. <laughs> you, you don't see the room. Here's you experience it. it. <laughs> I mean, it's a food option. Everyday <laughs> life <laughs> of your dead end jobs, of your uh, significant others cheating on you with your best friend, <laughs> of you not hitting her, and then you say hi to a mark. <laughs> Like, yeah, and then you throw a football with your gang and then ask casually how's everybody's sex life yeah. <laughs> oh out the blue and then when they ask you you'll say ha 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 it's a secret <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's like everyday life I tried man. watching that film I couldn't get past it I mean I can't for the life because I'm, I'm pretty sure when you watch it it's tearing you apart just like what Lisa <laughs> experienced in that visual masterpiece yeah it's, uh, I feel like tearing my eyeballs apart <laughs> after watching it and if you don't want to watch it it just makes you look like a chicken this happens every day for you Martin <laughs> Almost like nine out of ten times oh my god <laughs> anyway Martin how's your sex life <laughs> It's a secret. Box. It's a secret. Box. <laughs> oh gosh. So you should see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will definitely it's see the. It's an open secret. <laughs> so, that's how uh, Martin responds whenever his boss gives him work to do. You're tearing me apart, <laughs> boss. <laughs> and then he'll go like, "Oh, I, I'm sorry, Martin. I, I'm talking about the other Martin. <laughs> There's no other Martin here in this office. Exactly." <laughs> uh, before we go to the next list, let's take like a short break. From our commercial break, I hope you enjoyed our non-existent sponsors. Uh, during the end, it's just gonna be in one thing anyway. <laughs> On the list. Okay, so 
back to the list. Another reason why Bodega loves bad movies or, or bad TV shows. For that or matter. anything bad, video games, <laughs> or wrestling games. story arcs. Uh, true, true. <laughs> anything bad, but mostly, yeah, mostly the visual uh, medium is because you follow it because it's based on an obscure fandom. <laughs> and when I, I, I wrote this, I thought about this. I, own, I was thinking about Norm and his fandom for Farscape, the sci-fi TV series. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my fandom. Uh, I'm part of a fandom. fandom. Okay. Let's keep that clear. Farscape there are other people that familiar. like this content aside from me. Yes. It sounds yeah. familiar. What's Farscape? A man is not a fandom. <laughs> okay. Unless his name is Norm. Yeah. <laughs> in that case, it's, it's a mandom. Mandom. Yeah. mandom wing, sorry. Uh, uh, I remember uh, Norm telling me about this uh, TV series. <laughs> and I also remember trying to watch it on the sci fi channel. <laughs> Two episodes in, I just couldn't hack it. I just gave up. <laughs> and I couldn't see the reason why Norm liked it. There there was this uh, puppet. There were, there were puppets. <laughs> There was a living talking ship, but I just, <laughs> I just couldn't wrap my head head around it. It was my Star Trek, man. <laughs> really? Star Trek couldn't be your Star Trek? <laughs> we don't choose our Star Treks, John. They choose us. They choose us. <laughs> I chose Star Trek. <laughs> I chose Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I chose Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bob is a big fan of Lord of the Rings, but yeah, we gotta admit there there are things there. Well, some Look, of them Lord are of the bad. Rings is not awful. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. yeah. yeah. Star Trek, Star Wars, yeah, well, Star, Star Wars has its bad streak. Yeah, yeah. but they Star Trek also has Actually, some bad streak. Lord of the Rings had its bad streak with The Hobbit. <laughs> but, no, but uh, the book is the great. Book. Yeah, yeah and, and The oh, Hobbit yeah. is better than say. The, is it the odd number or the even numbered Star Wars movie? <laughs> that Star Trek movie. No, the, even, the, no, the odd the, numbered. The odd numbered Star, Star Trek. Trek if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Those are the bad ones. Yeah. So there's a yeah. The Hobbit was so better than the odd numbered Star Treks. Yeah, and then I play certain video games that nobody here plays, but I absolutely love. Like what? Uh, hey, would you consider them bad or a good? Uh, actually, I don't consider it bad. But I'm the only one who thinks, <laughs> among the group at least. But yeah. those who also like it, when I go through the forums and whatnot, see, visit forums, fandom. <laughs> uh, this game by Love in Space called... Um, oh, why am I forgetting right but, now? Yeah, but that, before we yeah. is that adventure deeper than that. Hatful that's, that's Boyfriend? No, no, not Hatful Boyfriend. <laughs> but yeah, that Space Simulator waifu I was telling everyone about. <laughs> what? Turn-based Space Simulator waifu. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Eh. Uh... Is a video game or a movie or TV series bad because it's obscure, or was it obscure because it was bad and nobody picked yeah, up I think on it? It has something to do with how it was made. Or probably or because again, it was an indie production. It, the the game is only just getting funding through its Patreon. It's called Sunrider. Uh, uh, <laughs> I am not sure if I'm the only one who finds it really good, but I absolutely enjoyed my time playing it. It's a space sim, and then all of a sudden beach sequence <laughs> so it has stuff like that the tropes that you, you see in anime uh, and, and the obscurity is not what makes it bad the obscurity is part of the attraction liking obscure yeah. stuff is what built the hipsters uh, there's more than one season of Farscape man <laughs> yeah I know it sounds so familiar there's it's only just, one season of yeah. Firefly it's oh, oh, an attack oh, on oh, Firefly. No, 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 Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> I'll take one episode of Firefly over the entire body of Farscape. <laughs> <laughs> From the man who hasn't seen it. I have seen Farscape. I haven't seen Farscape, so I guess. I have no idea what Farscape is. <laughs> but it sounds it's, familiar. It's, it's I thought it was the same, actually, as uh, Stargate SG-1, but that's different. No, no, that's no. Different. Come yeah. on. Farscape. Exactly. Oh, someone's going violent reaction on, on Stargate SG-1. Somebody's watching Stargate. <laughs> Somebody's a big MacGyver fan. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> You don't mess with MacGyver in space or in portals or in other time no, but, but the case in point of that example, for yeah. us at least, is CSI Miami. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In a way, well, it's hard to it's hard to qualify CSI Miami as obscure. It's not obscure. It's not obscure, but there are there things says, about it. There are kind of. Oh you pass on to the obscure. It's, the, it's a matter of being able to create in jokes to forge <laughs> communion. 
Yeah. And we have our CSI man. <laughs> <Oblifora. jokes>. Yeah. <laughs> oh it's God. just a fantastic sometimes. Yes. <laughs> it's just, just fantastic. It's just <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, what the hell is that show doing? <laughs> Was that the episode that. you guys watched before? No, why would it be? The Santeria episode. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah! If you're a CSI Miami fan, owe it to yourself to watch the Santeria yes. episode. And you, <laughs> the one, yeah, that one. The and one. you, and you, and we all thought. And I'm, I'm referring to, I mean, the collective bodega. We all thought it was good, and and this is another reason why we thought it was good because we were probably in an altered state of mind. <laughs> I actually never saw that episode. You should, and you should should. watch it. Don't watch it sober. (laughs) You're so tired and just need to brain or you're having an insomnia attack. Yeah. Watch it during those times. What season is this? I have no idea. Just look it up. I think it was a season finale. No, no, no. No, no, It was was season seven. Somewhere in the middle. It was in the middle. It was this, the episode where all of a sudden Horatio appeared behind Frank and said, she's dead, Frank. Is that it? No, no, no. No. But he does something similar. Oh, wait, is that the burn, baby burn thing? No. That's something else. <laughs> hey, you're right. Wait. What was it? Yes, I think it is. <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah. I think it happened. It's the blowing up yacht episode. No, 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 no. Four no. minutes yeah. before the truck blew up. Yes. yes. And then he had oh. still time to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He drove from the police station to a coastal no, road. Uh, he, he, yeah, he, he drove he, from the crime scene. Yeah. And yeah, he drove to uh, <coughs> through the coastal highway mm-hmm. to an, a deserted beach. <laughs> he had time to walk away <laughs> and to utter the line. <laughs> and just as he was about to, wear, and just as he wore it, all of a sudden it exploded. The truck yeah. explodes and behind him. And then as he was walking, he says, "Burn, baby, burn!" burn. <laughs> yeah. <Yes! laughs> See, in, in other, oh yeah, in, in a, in a oh completely shit. objective uh, <laughs> scale, that is. That is bad. It's that a sin. It's a gaming it's sin or like a movie sin. Right? Yeah, it's horrible. bad. But it's, it's awesome. so awesome. It's so good. And you know, that's yeah, a few minutes on that time. Yeah, that's why you went for her show and this time after that. Yes. <laughs> because he has the ability to bend space and time. <laughs> I remember, you remember that episode when they were in a shootout and the guy who was beside him, <laughs> Delco, was the one who was shot. <laughs> But they were aiming for Horatio. <laughs> and then we started making jokes that he could Horatio Kane had the ability to bend space and time. <laughs> Actually the funniest part at least with that I think when Horatio said, We're going to prison, all of a sudden you see a reflection of the airplane. Of the airplane. All of a sudden he's right on top of the Again, the, ability to bend space and I think that was the season finale for that episode. Yeah, maybe because yeah, he was chasing his son. Yeah, the yeah. chosen one. The chosen one. <laughs> All of a sudden, Horatio Cain was in Brazil. Yeah. He was kneeling in front of the Christ the Christ Redeemer statue. <laughs> and we started making jokes oh. about Horatio Cain, the avenging angel of justice. <laughs> With his <Yeah>. gunfighter stance. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, like this red oh. and... Wearing his jacket like an, an, an emotional suit of armor. <laughs> an emotional suit of armor. The obscure yes. fandom. Remember, I, I bought a magazine. <laughs> Because Horatio Kane was in the cover. And that's in the cult of Horatio. The cult of Horatio. <laughs> Wait, was that it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Entertainment Weekly or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was wearing the shades of justice <laughs> and the emotional <laughs> suit of armor <laughs> with a sh- uh, with a, uh, with a badge, a shiny, uh, a shiny so gold that's his heart. <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was the description in the magazine. And we just like, whoa. whoa. Okay, so we're not the only ones to <laughs> see. And in his house, was a standee of himself (laughs) (laughs) to greet all visitors to acknowledge his presence (laughs) yeah the the actor David Caruso had a standee of himself (laughs) oh my god he was was just full of himself I love yeah and that's why we love uh, the the little things about uh, CSI Miami it's just the weird things it was a big show but those little things that that was yeah. That was just really awesome. It lives in a pocket universe that defies the laws of physics. Yeah, actually, there is yeah. from all the other universes of CSI. Yeah, yeah there. I mean, for those that watch CSI Las Vegas and New York, you're watching for the serious aspect of it. But when you're watching CSI Miami, you're watching it for a totally different reason. And yeah, not just shows. Sometimes wrestling story arcs shared the same. Like yeah, I I mean, who's uh Zack Ryder had a huge internet following. 
but those who are like not so much in touch with what's happening <coughs> behind in, the scenes in, online yeah. wrestling have no idea who the hell Zack Ryder is or the hell he is doing. Yeah. But but like, uh, who else? Who's that three trio? Oh, the New Day. No, not New Day. Um, three Man Band. The Three Man Band. Like everybody thought Three Man Band sucks, but everybody who knows like who's dedicated to wrestling loves the Three Man Band. Like Jinder Mahal as a, as, yeah, a, as a rock and roll guy. Yeah. Wait, oh, oh, so that's where how he ended. Three Man Band. But I also like New Day. It's supposed yeah, right. to be a gospel band. <laughs> yeah. They're getting over right now. Yeah. yeah. With all the positivity. Yeah. All the clapping. Yeah. <laughs> And the unicorn, and the unicorn, yeah. I saw it. It's like I was weirded out. I mean, this is horrible. But and, and they're crusade <laughs> against the doctors and breaking tables. <laughs> no wood, no good. Did <laughs> 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 uh, actually said that? Their what? fandom is actually big right now that they had a petition against the Dudley Boys to stop breaking tables. It reached the it reached the uh, the amount for Kickstarter or something. Uh, wow. One of them changed dot org. Yeah, they changed dot org. <laughs> no wood, no good. No wood, no good. Oh, broken wood, no good. All right, next on the list. Next on the yeah, list. next on the list is well, yeah, we, uh, this is kind of related. Uh, both of them, we actually thought it was good these movies because we were had by the marketing machine <laughs> I mean like Max Payne <laughs> yes don't start don't start Max Payne the movie don't start you, you guys. guys kept you guys suck you know <laughs> you guys best kept... movie ever <laughs> you guys kept mentioning it when I finally saw it I was like this is the worst thing <laughs> I just wasted two right. hours of my life well, what do you mean? At least you. Okay, okay. At least here's the back. Your life. Here's the backstory for our dear listeners of what happened Watchers with Max Payne. Bok here, watch with Zhao and John. No, no, no. no. I watched no, watch, watch by himself. Yeah. I watched a little. He, first he watched a first showing. I watched okay. a first the next showing. Was, so was me, Zhao, and John. Yeah. And actually, yeah. I was walking back to Yoyan and then I saw yeah John, John, and Zhao headed over, and then they saw me. Oh my gosh, Bok looks so. Sad. Bok, what's wrong? And they said, dude, it sucks. <laughs> and then when they came back, when they came back in the UENP, all of a sudden, they After were watching like, the movie. After watching the film, they were like... They, they went back and talked to Bok, and the trio said that Max Payne is amazing. <laughs> yes, we told so them. poor little Bok found a... Mi- like, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> Why do I think this is... Why is everybody saying this is amazing? Really, for a while, I thought my aesthetics were like, wait a minute, there's something... Yeah, I miss something. So like me and Joy were like, you know what? This is like a seminal video game movie. This is a groundbreaking adaptation. And Joe was like, this is the best video game movie ever. I mean, did you see the visual poetry and the, and the symbolism, the symbolism and the transition, and the pacing? And Bob was like, did what? we watch the same movie? <laughs> <laughs> and they're really like saying something about yeah. I really felt Max's pain. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, 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 it can't be. And then all of a sudden, I think John said something completely up bonkers, and all of a sudden, John couldn't take it. And the guy started laughing his guts off. My goodness, you guys suck, you know that. <laughs> oh yeah, for me another movie. Well, it was just outright bad. Uh, Norm and I talked about well, Norm's <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bodega Nights! Uh, what do you call this? What movie is that? The one with Gerard Butler and... Uh, um, Law Abiding Citizen. Citizen! Jesus yeah. Christ, I thought... Oh, everybody say, oh, it's an amazing movie. Saw the trailers. Wow, this looks great! And then we watched, like... What the f*** is this shit? <laughs> I think what happened with that film was the ending of Craft. Yeah, the ending killed it. it. It was the ending that killed the movie. Because I don't think they it wanted It didn't give up a yeah, I think this one broke. Yeah, but happened. everybody was saying, "Oh man, you gotta watch it!" and they, and the trailers are amazing. And Norman and I were like, "Are we the only two that didn't like it?" And then when I heard Bob and I heard Joy, I'm just like, no, "Yeah, it was awful. It was awful." No, I haven't seen it. I mean, the rest. Are oh, just, okay. I just heard it also. Because yeah, yeah, I heard from Joy. It's an amazing job. movie. <laughs> you should watch. Screw it. you, man. I don't. <laughs> I really think they the idea that I think what Joy was trying to say is that they they defeated the bad guy without outsmarting him. Yeah. Or it was a cop out. The, the reward wasn't there. There was no payoff. The, the reason why I bring up the marketing machine hype, the thing is, 
I want this is the uh, now this is the part of the podcast where we're sort of serious. <laughs> no, 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 okay. Because the other reasons uh, we can gloss over them or we can kind of discuss them. Uh, and uh, another reason why Bodega loves uh, bad movies is because we live to be snarky. We want to make fun <laughs> of uh, bad movies, and also because seriously, we're hoping that it's so bad it's good, like the Street Fighter movie, the one with Van Damme, like the Room. The, the room, what else? Uh, other things. But the reason why I bought up the marketing machine <laughs> hype thing is sometimes, yeah, you, you, you're suckered in by the trailer, or you're suckered in, or you know that the director or the people involved in the movie are good. Prometheus. And, yeah, Prometheus. Prometheus. It's spe- and, and it's related to what I'm going to bring up, and some of you might uh, disagree with this. It's another sci fi movie, Interstellar. We know that it was a Christopher Nolan movie, mm-hmm. yeah. and we were all looking forward to it. And some people didn't quite like it. And <laughs> some people loved thought it. it might actually be bad. Some people appreciated it and lo- liked it. I'm sure what I go for is more of an. Uh, I'd rather yeah. go for Dark Knight Rises rather than Interstellar. But, uh, but, but was it bad? I mean, it wasn't bad. I mean, Dark Knight Rises, I think, just couldn't live up to the. Dark Knight Rises? The dark, yeah, yeah, the Dark Knight Rises. Uh-huh. Yeah, Dark Knight Rises, right? The comics returns. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Dark Knight Rises, I think, yeah, um, couldn't get over. I think the fact that Dark Knight was awesome. But, Interstellar, but Interstellar, however, yeah. I think Inter- what Interstellar had going for it was more or less an original story without any tied IPs. Yeah, intellectual I mean, as as property. Concerned, it's, an, it's a, an original IP. And I think some people are more or less looking for that again. I mean, because for for some reason, and it's no one's fault for doing it for coming with two good films back to back with Dark Knight and Inception, the visceral thrill, yeah, vis- visceral visceral thrills and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And although we have to remember, prior to that, no one's actually more for laid back, very reserved, very art, art, artsy fartsy director. Mm-hmm. And he was actually more for intellectual no, type it's films. No one's fault, at least, is that, again, it's it's same problem it's that the, I not feel. Really fault. Not fault. No, I, I, it's a fault. It's a oh, fault. Uh, or a flaw. Same as Neil Gaiman. I think what's wrong with both of them are is the not fans. themselves, but their fans. Uh, mm-hmm. Because when you look at Inception, people are saying it's deep. The people who look at Interstellar are saying it's deep. Both are not really it's not. that deep. <laughs> it's all of his stories are pretty much just, just like, but yeah, one person's struggle with you know identity and its own self. I would say that Nolan's stories are complex, but not necessarily deep. Yeah, they're not deep, but he they're goes through all these means. Actually. To try to like circumvent expectations yeah, of, I mean, of gonna, what do you think the story would flow through. Yeah, but we're gonna talk about Memento. I mean, if, at least with some of other Nolan's films, aside from the established ones. I mean, Nolan's films are complex in the sense that they seem to show an aspect. Actually, the thing I find disturbing with Nolan is the fact that he tends to talk about the human condition as. All right, listeners, you know what we mean when we said we want to be snarky and sounding intelligent when we talk about movies. <laughs> you see what Bob is doing? That's exactly it. You know what Bob is doing? And since we're now in a visual medium, he's bringing the conversation to another <laughs> level. He's raising the level. He's raising the level of discussion. <laughs> An elevated discussion. Yeah, sorry about that. About uh, movie making and philosophy. And well, man, the what thing is, Nolan, no, Nolan presents things in a pretty complex manner, even though his stories are pretty much Yeah, hard. in Tagalog, yeah. ang babaw niya lang. But no, I the way say, he delves into it is where I think his skill lies. I wouldn't say it's mababaw or shallow. I would say that it's actually pretty straightforward. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I guess straightforward is the proper term. Um, Inception is basically yeah, a dad that just needs to go back to his, to his this kids. Family, kids, and his means of doing that is through a last a job. <laughs> well, yeah, the it's last job. job. Yeah, it's yeah. the last job. Interstellar, there you have to save the world by going through a wormhole. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> and but. But well, Batman's Batman. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, but Interstellar does not qualify really as a bad movie. Yeah, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's a, actually a, a very good movie. For me, it is. Uh, it really I think it was at, at the very least on par with Inception. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not. Uh, it's I, not, it's not something I would categorize as 
uh, snark bait. Mm. I think, but I think yeah. what Steam was trying to point out there is things with regard to the marketing. Yeah, the marketing and the, and the, and the hype, hype the surrounding the hype machine. An example of a film that got hype, yeah, to a degree and to a really faulty degree was Prometheus. Yeah, yeah. I mean Maybe because it was going for Ridley Scott. Yeah, all it was a. Uh, all the, well, yeah, and it was a prequel mm-hmm. to an established franchise. Or a precursor. A precursor. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's set out to be the mythology behind the alien world. Mm-hmm. To which, all of a sudden, on retrospect, I'm thinking, wait a minute. I, the reason what made Alien and Aliens really good is that they didn't really explain rega- regarding the... They didn't really explain the origins of the Xenomorphs. Or, or, or a simpler example is when you look at the video game Watch Dogs. <laughs> Everybody loved that game when it was first shown in E3. Everybody yeah. was looking forward to it. Once the game finally arrived, everybody was like, are we gonna say really this is a good game? It is not. Mm. No. I think it wasn't a more fun game. It was a bad game. Bad game. It, it's it's really. slightly <laughs> different, I think, because with, with at least with video games and movies, because with, with movies, uh, the hype... Mm, the high, uh, how do I put this? Because with with Prometheus, yeah, they hyped it by uh, bringing up its aliens. collection, its yeah. connections to the yeah to, to alien the, by the alien. and it, it they do it with usually with the poster from the studios from the director of yeah. mm-hmm. and so they use the connections, the peripheral surrounding the the, the movie to to hype it up with Watch Dogs. It was more of what we imagined would be in the game, mm. <laughs> and yeah. turning because it was a very interesting concept. That's just what sold it yeah. to begin with. That, that, and I it was catered for the next gen. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I, I was gonna uh, comment on that uh, in that in the hype surrounding a movie because uh, the experience of watching a movie is fundamentally different from experiencing a video game. So that's why in a movie uh, <clears throat> because. Uh, it's like it's in a way a one-time experience. If if you think it's bad or good, okay, you you probably set an opinion on it. But with a video game, sometimes you play it once. Uh, uh, maybe a certain part of it is not that good, but then a, another part of it, after you play it after a while or you play it again, oh okay, you you, you grow to appreciate it. Huh. Would, would would that be possible? Do you no, think for me, a video game is not a uh, it's a whole. If it's yeah. bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. Yeah, there are some. It's like a movie. There's some good moments, yeah. some bad moments. So that makes a movie a mediocre one. Yeah. For but me, if it's absolutely good, then fine and good. But if it's entirely bad, it, a video game for me that uh, fits your example <coughs> for me, it's, it's Borderlands. We were talking about it earlier. Borderlands Two, it was an average game for me. Mediocre attempt at best. But I wouldn't call it bad. I wouldn't call it awful. Or I wouldn't even call it good. It's, it. Does it do what it does? It's a video game. It's entertaining. It's fun. At least it fulfills it. Some movies are the same, but I don't think that. Oh, I'm playing a video game because this part is good, and after that, I'm done. Actually, the annoying part is Last of Us. I think my last example would be The Last of Us, because mm-hmm. everything up to the, f- the game was so good until the ending, wherein the story really took a drastic turn, which I thought was a really bad direction. Who well, some could argue that it's probably meant to be, but the way you see it, I think from a narrative perspective, it really loses the the player and, at and, that particular. Point. And there are movies that do improve upon second or third view, and mm-hmm. they usually end up as cult classics or cult favorites. For me, that well, actually, a movie that turned awful is Watchmen. Mm-hmm. The, the the comics for me was great, and then when I realized they deviated from that in the movie, I was like, why? Mm-hmm. And then I realized. Yeah, with repeated debates from you and repeated yeah. watchings from me just to see what the hell really what did John saw in this one. Then I realized, yeah. Okay. Actually watch. The movie was awful because of that ending. Mm. I mean, movie? the movie was better because of that ending.